Okay, good morning. Today we're going to have a teach back on the chapter that deals with the kidney, the urinary tract, and reproductive organs. Um, one of the things that a nurse must be monitoring among our patients, aside from the vital signs such as your blood pressure, your heart rate, your respiration rate, is of course to monitor what urinary output, right? And as we go and discuss this, we need to know why, okay? Can anybody tell me what is the main function of your kidney? Anybody? Filtration of the blood. Filtration of the blood, okay, very, very good. So very carefully, make sure you understand it filters the blood. It does not filter the urine, okay? It filters the blood in order to produce urine. So what is it that it filters from the blood? Anybody? Waste. Hmm? Waste. Nitrogenous waste. So for it to become nitrogenous waste, it contains what? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. Okay. Can, can somebody check? Is, is the recording on? Okay. I just do want to double check this. REC. There it is. Okay. Because I want to be standing here for one hour and then it's not being recorded. So it filters waste coming from the blood. They're called nitrogenous waste because they contain nitrogen. And can anybody tell me what are these three waste products that needs to be removed from the blood and to be passed out in the urine? Give me one. Urea? What else? Uric acid. Uric acid and? Okay, what is it? Okay. Be very, very, very careful, my dear students. Creatinine, not creatine, okay? So these three are waste products. And what does the kidney do? Filters what? Blood, which means remove what? These three. Nitrogenous waste and allow them to come out where? Wee-wee. In the wee-wee or the urine, exactly. Why do you want to make it come out in the wee-wee? Because we don't need them. What we don't need, we excrete. Let's go poo-poo, stool, wee-wee, urine. When we exhale, we get rid of carbon dioxide, another form of a waste product, right? Okay, so, that's the main function, but of course there are other functions such as the production of what, erythropoietin, mm -hmm. which basically stimulates the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells. And that's the reason why when a patient develops kidney failure, you're not able to produce erythropoietin, therefore you develop what? You're not able to stimulate the red bone marrow to produce red blood cells, you de develop anemia due to chronic kidney disease. And what would Dr. Gamma prescribe? synthetic form of erythropoietin, which some of you will probably know as epigen, procrit. Essentially, this is the synthetic form of erythropoietin. So, let's review the anatomy of the kidney. Whatever you do, you always go back to anatomy, right? If this were the heart, the left ventricle, you have the ascending aorta because it goes up, then the arch, and then descending, this descending becomes thoracic aorta because it is found in the thoracic cavity. It penetrates the diaphragm and then it enters the abdominal cavity. Now you have the abdominal aorta. The abdominal aorta divides into two right and left <coughs> common iliac. And the common iliac divides into external iliac and then what? Internal iliac. So now observe that the kidney is supplied with arterial blood. What is the name of the artery that brings oxygenated blood to the kidney? Very good, renal artery. <laughs> Notice that the right kidney is lower than the left. Why is that so? The liver is on the right side. The liver is here. What does the liver do to the right kidney? It pushes, it pushes it downwards. It down. So therefore, the right kidney is slightly lower than the left kidney. So, how does the blood get to the kidney? 
renal artery. How does the blood get away from the kidney? What? Vein. Renal what? Vein. vein. And where does the renal vein go? I'm just going to discuss one side of the kidney. It goes what? What is the 5 north freeway here? 5 north freeway. Inferior vena cava. Very good. And where does the inferior vena cava bring the blood to? What chamber of the heart? The right atrium. Superior vena cava will be here. All, from all the veins in the head, the neck, and the upper limbs go there. All the veins in the foot, the leg, and the thigh, together with the organs here, all the veins will go via the inferior vena cava. Renal vein, inferior vena cava, right atrium. Real artery, the blood came from the aorta, and then the aorta came from the left ventricular chamber of the heart. So, my big question to you is this. How is it therefore possible for these three waste products to reach the kidney? Which blood vessel will be involved in bringing these waste products to the kidney? Miss Nang. Very good. I like your answer. Very renal artery. Very fast, quick. You know, it was so quick and fast. Of course. So these three, together with the oxygenated blood, will enter the kidney. And once it enters the kidney, the kidney will remove the waste and allow it to go where? What is that structure that brings blood, urine away from the kidney? The ureter. Go to the bladder. UB means urinary bladder. Then urethra. And of course, out into the urinal or the toilet bowl. So, that's very important, very basic anatomy. Now, bear in mind, therefore, let's review the anatomy of the, what is the structure or functional unit of the kidney? Nephron. Nephron. Do you realize that in your book, there is a chapter, a few pages devoted to anatomy, right? I hope you read that part. Although we always say, read this chapter, but normally there's a chapter before the chapter on the diseases that talks about normal anatomy. So what are the parts of the nephron? Tell me. Bowman <coughs> capsule. Okay, what else? Glomerular. So PCT, what is PCT? Um, okay, convoluted means it has a lot of coil. Tubule, it's a tube where the urine will flow initially. Then the loop of what? And then what? This the convoluted tubule, and then the collecting what? Ducts. Each kidney has how many nephrons? One million. One million in the right, one million in the left. If you add, you have two million. That means you and I are multi-millionaires. Okay. It's true. We're rich in nephrons, okay? So, in front of the Bowman's capsule is, what do you find here? Right in front of the Bowman's capsule. Glomerulus. The glomerulus, very good. Now, can anybody tell me what exactly is a glomerulus? Capillary. Very good, capillaries. And what exactly is a capillary, my dear? It's the um, vessel that connects our What kind of vessel? A boat? A vessel? What does it contain? Blood. So what kind of vessel is it? Blood. Of course! Your answer is correct, but I want you to be more specific. You just don't say vessel, but you say what? Physical. Blood vessel. Because remember the word vessel? The boat, you know? The vessel will live in two hours, sir. But here we're dealing with a blood vessel, and what does a blood vessel contain? Blood. Blood. I don't you love anatomy? The first time I laid my eyes on anatomy, I fell in love. It's like the first time I laid my eyes on my wife, she fell in love with me. <laughs> I fell in love with her, okay? Love at first sight. Love at first sight with anatomy, okay? 
So, what is before the glomerular capillaries would be the afferent one? Arterial. What will come after the glomerular capillaries would be what? Efferent. Efferent. And where did the afferent arterial come from? If you review your anatomy, there's a series of arteries, globular, lobular, interlobular, but it actually came from what? The renal. And the renal came from where? Aorta and the aorta came from where? The heart, the left ventricle of the heart, right? So left ventricle, aorta, renal artery, afferent, glomerular capillaries, efferent. What comes after the efferent arterial? Peritubular Peri what? So how many sets of capillaries do we have here? One, two. So apparently what will pass here will all be blood. What will found pass here would be the initial urine, we call it as the glomerular filtrate. So this will have a series of veins, series of veins, then initially uh, becomes vein. The renal vein goes where? If you have in the cava, and where does it go? Right. The right atrium of the heart, back to the heart. So what came from the heart goes back to the heart. That's why what came from the heart goes back to the heart. By the time it goes back to the heart, you have already removed what? The waste, right? You have removed the waste. Now, can anybody tell me the normal, normal now, have you heard of the word BUN and creatinine, right? BUN, 8 to 25, creatinine, 0 0.6 to what? 1.5. Anything above 25 for BUN, it is elevated. There's something wrong with your kidney. These are part of what they call kidney function test. Anything above 1.5 for creatinine means there is something wrong with the kidney too. If it's elevated, then you'll be having what we call renal failure, okay? So these are what we call kidney function test. So the BUN starts for blood, urea, nitrogen, serum creatinine is this value here, okay? So let's, let's, let's talk about what happens, what, what is the normal color of the urine again, class? Pale yellow to amber. What's the color? Yeah. Yellow, pale yellow to amber. What do you think happens when you have a patient that is assigned to you and starts to complain, nurse, take a look at my urine, it has become red. What do you think is the reason why this urine turned red? Yes? Hmm? Blood. What? Blood in the urine. What is that called? Hematuria. If you're monitoring hourly urinary output, What is the magic number that we should always remember that is considered normal? Very Very good, 30 ml per what? Hour. Per one hour. Anything below 30 ml is what we call what? Oliguria. It comes from the root word oligo, which means what? Scanty or a few volume or amount of urine. Oria, of course, referring to the urine. Now, in a patient in the hospital, I would always order, I tell the nurses, I put that in the chart, insert an indwelling catheter. The catheter is inserted. You put 15 to 30 cc's of either sterile solution or depending on what kind of indwelling catheter you use, sometimes they use air. So the goal is, when you insert the catheter here into the urethra, arrives at the bladder, once you inflate the balloon at the tip of the catheter, it would be difficult for the patient to, what? <coughs> to pull it out or take it off because the presence of the inflated balloon inside the bladder will prevent it from being yanked out by the patient. Then you have a what? 
the euro bag. The euro bag is calibrated with numbers. <coughs> How many ml, so on and so forth and so on, okay? So if you are a patient, let's say from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. in the morning, you found out that the urine output was 20 ml. Is that oliguria? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Are you going to call Dr. Gamo? Yes. Dr. Gamo, this is so and so. Uh, you, you've been to the Sims lab, right? See, when, when, before you call the doctor, make sure you have done your own research, assessment, you've examined the patient for the second time around before you call me. And make sure you know the lab results of the patient, right? And you say, All right, Dr. Gamo, I'd like to inform you, your patient, Mr. Smith, the urine output from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. is only 20 ml. Obviously, he is oliguric. So I will now need to know why. I need to find out. The question now is that, is, there, is that evidence of possible re renal failure, acute renal failure? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So I tell the nurse, nurse, I want you to do a stat BUN. Okay, Miss Tan, Krista Del Tan, what specimen are you going to send to the lab? Quiet, please. B U N, yes, what specimen? If I want to know the kidney function of this patient, the patient is oligoric, you just told me, it's 20 ml from 7 to 8 a.m. I ordered stat B U N, what specimen are you going to send to the lab? Miss Tan? Urine. Urine specimen. Can you please tell me why did you think of urine? Because? Because the patient is oligoric. oligoric. Now, are you taking down notes, Miss Tan? Yes. Okay. What did I say about the word B and what does the B and the U and the N represent? Especially the B. Give me a B. Give me a U. <laughs> Give me an N. <laughs> Were you here already when I was talking? No. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was You were here already. You, you, you. I was. I just talked about this like what two minutes ago. Yeah. Or maybe your neighbor there, maybe your yes, be there. What does the B U N stand for? I see that you're taking down notes. Blood. 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 Mm -hmm. Urea. Urea. And then what? Nitrogen. Just so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y your neighbors, right? So she knows the blood, urea, and nitrogen. You don't know the blood, urea, and nitrogen? But you didn't take down notes, or you're not paying attention? I'm just kidding, I'm not trying to humiliate you, but. Could be one of those. <laughs> in life, and if you become future nurses, in whatever you do, you need to what? What, how many percent of concentration? 100%. 99% or 100%? 100. To be successful in life, you have to have what? 100%. 100%. Especially when you're dealing with a patient who's dying, right? Yeah. A patient is dying and you can you afford to do a Facebook? You know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. So both of you are, but it's okay. That's what you can see, right? All of us are here and I do not know if everybody wrote the word B-U-N as blood, urea, and nitrogen, right? I raise your hand if you did. There you go. So B stands for blood. And how many times will it be possible for a nurse to send the wrong specimen of urine? Very high sometimes, right? Especially if they do not come from West Coast. But because you come from the greatest university in the world, and the universe called West Coast, the best in the West, actually best in the West and in the East. <laughs> now you know that the B stands for Miss Tan, as what? Blood. So what specimen are you gonna send, urine or blood? Urine. Oh, all <laughs> blood, urine, and Okay. One more question this time. You're gonna take the nursing board exam, right? Yeah. Okay. So you have to be the smartest person in the world. Dr. Gamo ordered a stat B U N. What specimen are you going to send to the lab? Huh? Why? So it's not just giving me the right answer, but you have to explain. Why blood? Okay, yes, my dear, why blood? Because the B stands for blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny, right? She's right. <laughs> She's right.
married because the Hebrew was even give me a B, give me a U, give me an N. The B in B U N stands for blood. So don't you love this class? It's so simple, right? We don't want it to be complicated because the word complicated is only used in Facebook. Remember, in Facebook, complicated means what? Relationships? Oh, oh my God, the, the, the joke. It takes time for it to process the joke. Remember the word Facebook? Complicated relationships? I believe, if this were the Miss Universe contest, I believe K-I-S-S. What is K-I-S-S? Keep it simple, student. The simple, the better, right? Because it's easier to remember. B-U-N, blood, urine, what's best with blood? If I say serum creatinine, what specimen? Blood, because serum is part of plasma. Plasma is found in the blood. Do you understand? Okay, now, patient is oligoric. You find out that the BUN is 30. Is that high or low? So what does it mean? It means only one thing. When the blood was passing through the glomerulus, it filtered the blood, removed the urea, and allow the urine to go where? Into the bladder, into the ureter. But notice, not all of the urea is removed. That's why you still have, what, 8 to 25. Not all of the urea is removed. Not all of the creatinine is removed. That's why you still have a amount of 1.5 or less. The moment it goes beyond 1.5 for creatinine and more than 25 for BUN, that means there is azotemia. What is azotemia? Elevation of this nitrogenous waste products. How do you spell azotemia? A-Z-O-T-E-M-I-A. Nya means blood, okay? So the point therefore is that this is something that you need to understand. Whenever there is an oligoric patient, this is what happens. Now, can anybody tell me in their own words, what exactly do you mean to filter the blood? How many of you were my students in anatomy in this class? Two of you, who else? Okay, only two? Were you not a former student in anatomy? Why did you not raise your hand? Are you ashamed of me? How dare you? Okay, the three of you who are here, and you claim to be my former student, what was the analogy I gave with regards to the kidney glomerulus as a filter? It's similar to what? Very good, Miss Dilley. What, 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 if you, you want to share with me, what was the grade did you get in that to be high? I got an A minus. Okay, which is still high, you know. A minus, 90 to 92.5, very high. So she's right. When you go to the kitchen, you have a strainer. What does a strainer have? Huh? What does the strainer have? Holes. What kind of holes? Small or very small? Very, very small. The strainer. Imagine that there is an empty glass underneath the strainer. What is this called? Empty glass. Is it empty? It is. Does it have anything in it? There's nothing. There's an empty glass. This is the strainer. I have an orange fruit. I put the orange fruit here. I squeeze the orange fruit. What comes out into the empty glass? Orange juice. Orange juice, yeah. Talking about the orange fruit, orange juice, what remains on top of a strainer? Hmm? Particles. What? Can you give me more specific than particles? The pulp. What else? Hmm? The seed. Very good. Now, what does the seed and the pulp represent with regards to the filtration that occurs here? The pulp or the seed represents your red blood cell. It represents what? The albumin and the globulin proteins that are not considered waste. Mm -hmm. And why did not, why is it that they did not go through? Because they're so big. What about the urea and the creatinine? So small it went out with the orange juice, part of the urine. Now how do I convert this into a glomerular capillary? All I need is to convert this into what? Into what? Like this, take a look. Now I have what? A capillary. What is this? 
It's called the lumen of the blood vessel. The blood passes through. Again, if you were my former student, which one has a bigger diameter? Afferent or efferent? Afferent. Very good. In other words, the efferent is constricted. The afferent is wider. This is the what? The holes in the glomerular capillaries. That's the filter. Okay, because of vasoconstriction like this, smaller efferent, wider afferent arterial, this is the glomerular capillaries. If you constrict the efferent below, afferent wider, glomerular in between, what happens to the blood pressure here? High or low? Higher. If therefore you have a higher blood pressure, what will that high blood pressure do to the blood? It pushes the blood where? Towards the wall, like this, so that what comes out there would be what? Urea, creatinine, uric acid, and water. So what, remember what I did with the orange fruit? What did I do with the orange fruit? Squeeze. So in this case, what will squeeze the blood against the wall to make the urea come out in the holes would be what? The elevated blood pressure. Did you understand? Okay. It's called hydrostatic or blood pressure. Okay? So, what comes out is blood, I'm sorry, uh, um, urea, creatinine, uric acid, because they're very small particles, but the red blood cell will go through. The albumin and globulin will go through. Do you understand? Now, what happens if you've heard about this? So, I'll give you an example. A patient came to the emergency room complaining of bloody urine, hematuria is present. Based on your review of the history of present illness, patient complains that one week prior to consultation, he had a sore throat. And it was discovered that it was a streptococcus bacterial infection. One week later, developed hematuria, and you notice there's some degree of oliguria. Patient is suffering from what condition? Hmm? Burger's disease. That's too far away. Remember, that's for the feet. Hematuria, he had a sore throat with streptococcus bacterial infection. Yes? Okay, post infection or post streptococcal acute glomerulonephritis. So, what does it mean? It's post streptococcal. What does it mean? You had a sore throat, you have a streptococcal bacteria. You develop what? An immune response. You form an immune complex. Remember, what type of hypersensitivity was this? One, two, three, or four? Three. Very good. I like this group. This is very small. You remember the lessons in the past? Three. Therefore, this, the immune complex destroyed the glomerulus. What is glomerulonephritis? Nephritis means inflammation of the kidney. Which part of the kidney is inflamed when you say glomerulo? The glomerulus. So what do you think happens when you have glomerular nephritis? What happens to the holes? Will the holes become bigger or smaller? Huh? Bigger. Of course, bigger. And if the holes become bigger, will it be possible for the red blood cell to go through? Yes. Will you expect, therefore, to be able to explain in a scientific manner why the patient developed hematuria in the first place? What am I trying to dive at here? If you know what is normal, then you know what is abnormal. In other words, there is nothing that you cannot explain in this world. And that is your goal. To become the smartest nurse in the world. And the goal is to get an A in this class. Because if you get an A in this class, 99.9% .9 you will pass the nursing board exam, 99% you'll be able to pay your student loans, 99.9% .9 you can buy five houses in Vegas, five houses in Arizona, put up your own nursing board and care facility, and become the richest woman in the world. If you pass the nursing board exam, if you know your anatomy and physiology. But if not, you can even buy your own ice cream, okay? You won't be able to pay your student loan. Now, I don't think that would be a good motivation. Your motivation is to become the smartest 
nurse in the world so they can save lives. It's not the money after all, right? Or is it? You want to save lives. So you want to be the best nurse that you can be, right? Okay? So when I tell the nurse, I want a stat B and then what specimen are we going to send to the lab? Blood, because the B stands for what? Blood, U, urea, and nitrogen. So the U does not mean urine, okay? Maybe this, some people could get confused with the U. Give me a U. Urine. No. The U stands for what? Urea. And N stands for what? Everything I just said are all in this whiteboard. How many of you have a whiteboard at home? I strongly suggest you do what I do. Pretend that you are doing a lecture on YouTube. Then exactly do what I do. And for me, that I think the best way to learn. So you call your five, no, not the five-year-old kid, because they will roam around. You have a 10-year-old kid, daughter, son, sit down, I'm gonna give you a lecture on the kidney function. And they're busy doing it on a cell phone, you know. Or pretend that you have an imaginary friend. Not because you're crazy, but you know. And you do what I do, what I'm saying. So you don't even have to make it look nice, but the bottom line is that you are expected to explain things. Now, so why would I do this? So the first thing you will tell me is oliguria. Then I'll ex ex I want you to do this. So if the kidney is failing, that means you're not able to put all the urea here. Some of the urea and creatinine will be remain here. That's why if I got a blood specimen in the veins, this will be elevated because that means the kidney is failing. Do you understand? Okay. Now, have you heard of creatinine clearance? A third way. For GFR, right? Filtration rate. In doing, what do you mean by the word clearance? Clearance means to clear. What does clear mean? Remove the waste from the blood. Creatinine clearance is often done with a 24-hour urine collection. What do I mean by that? For example, I tell the nurse, I want you to start collecting the urine from 7 in the morning of Monday up to 7 a.m. the following day of Tuesday, right? Okay, so Monday, 7 a.m., Tuesday, 7 a.m. You're supposed to do a 24-hour urine collection. 7 a.m., I get what? Zero creatinine blood specimen. I get the norm value. Another <laughs> specimen when? of the blood on Tuesday, so the phlebotomist will get the blood, send it to the lab, but you start collecting the urine specimen from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. Okay, now the question is this. When you went there at 7 in the morning of Monday, the patient has a Yoru bag, indwelling catheter, you found out at 7 in the morning of Monday, you saw that there was 50 ml of urine there. What are you going to do with urine specimen of 50 ml? Are you going to keep that as part of your urine collection no. or discard? Okay, who says discard? Who says I'll keep the urine specimen? Who says I do not know? <laughs> okay, you do not raise your hand, so what's your answer? I don't know. What about you? Uh, people at the back, you do not raise your hand. So, or the other five, of, I don't really care. I just want to take the quiz today, right? So. You have to care because you have to know why, okay? Okay. Why are we going, the correct answer is discard. Why? Why do I need to discard that 50 ml that you saw at 7th morning of Monday? Hmm? Yes? So you start at 7. So whatever you see there is form when? Before 7. That's the only logical explanation. So to be smart in this world, you have to be able to explain to me in a very logical manner. Dr. Gamo, you ordered to collect specimen from 7 a.m. of Monday to 7 a.m. of Tuesday. So when I go there at 7 a.m., that specimen of urine there in the Eurobag was done or collected before 7 a.m. So I need to get that, discard that, because I do not need that. On the other hand, Tuesday morning, you went there at 7, there is 60 ml of urine. What are you going to do with that urine specimen? Discard or collect? Yes. Of course, collect, because obviously it was four before 
6 a.m. or 7 a.m. of Tuesday. Will this kind of questions come out in the nursing board exam? Yo. It's just common sense. But sometimes, because of a failure to focus and concentrate during a lecture like this, you're busy talking to your neighbor, right? So you're busy opening your mouth and you're not paying attention, and you forget what is important, right? And you cannot concentrate, and you miss things. And when you miss things, you could fail an exam. And what exam am I referring to? The NCLEX exam, right? You understand. Now, apparently, therefore, there is a calculation made. You don't have to know it. We will be able to know whether it is what. So notice you have to compare. The review. So there is, where is the creatinine going to be found? In the blood. Will there also be creatinine in the urine? Yes or no? Yes, Ms. Nam? Yes. Why? Because that's our waste. Okay, so of course. Remember I told you, the creatinine is going to come here, it goes to the collecting duct, and then comes out in the urethane, in the urine. So this is the reason why you would expect creatinine in the blood to be removed compared to this, and the creatinine in the urine. And there is a special formula for that, okay? Of course, another one is the calculation of the glomerular filtration rate. How fast is the glomerulus able to filter the blood? Does that make sense? Okay. So the bottom line, therefore, is that in whatever things we do in the hospital, you as a future nurse must understand why. Why did the doctor order me to monitor the urinary output? Why did the doctor told me to do a stat BUN and creatinine when I told him that the urine output was less than 30 ml per hour? You have to ask why. Where, what, and how? What specimen? Blood specimen. In a 24-hour urine collection, what specimen? Urine, because you have to collect the urine. It's very simple, right? If you know the answer. And that is how you become a smart student, preparing yourself for what? The NCLEX exam. In, you are lucky because you have that green light. Remember ATI? ATI is Assessment Technology Institute. It is a test designed to know how much you know and how much you do not know. And if you pass the green light, that means you're ready to take the exam in the next couple of days. They always recommend that you take it within the first few weeks after graduation, because hoping that everything is still what? Fresh. So don't get pregnant during the time you're about to take the nursing board exam. Can you imagine you're, you're reviewing? <laughs> Hyper is gravidarum. I think it's one of the study guide questions, right? <coughs> okay, now. So are there any questions regarding this now? So you would expect oliguria to be present in patients with this kind of condition. Now, in your study guide, I mentioned the importance of uh, knowing the different types of causes of acute tubular necrosis, right? Necrosis means death of the tubules. The tubules. So if you destroy the tubules and destroy them and they're dead, can they filter the blood, or urine, no. and form the urine? No. So remember, what are the three <laughs> stages there? You have what? Prodroma, then what? Oliguric and post-oliguric. Some books refer to this as recovery phase, right? So apparently, you will notice you have what? Stages in ATN, which apparently will be leading to acute renal failure, prodromal, Oligoric, and then what? Post oligoric, which sometimes will lead to what they call a recovery phase. So, oligoric is when you see the actual what? Oliguria. When you are oligoric, that means less urine is coming out or less water is coming out because what is happening? You are what? The kidney is failing and therefore you are retaining what? Water. When you are retaining water here in you know, the oligoric phase, is that fluid volume overload or fluid volume deficit? Overload. overload. That's why you have periorbital what? Edema, right? You can have ascites, which means fluid here in the abdominal cavity. You have bipedal edema, right? See, these are manifestations of fluid or water retention. So oligoric means less urine or less water coming out because you're actually what? Retaining the water is fluid overload. On the other hand, here, when you develop polyuria as a form of compensation, 
reach what excessive amount of urine output, you can have what? Fluid volume deficit. Okay? Is that clear? Now, what can lead to renal failure? There are three types. Pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. Let's deal first with post-renal causes. So what are they again? Pre-renal. Next is what? Intra. And the third one is what? Post. Okay, what's the most common cause of post-renal disorders? The leading to possible ARF. Yes, ma'am? Block in the ureter. Block in the ureter. Very good. And this happened to me. When you have a block here, what is the most common cause of blockage of the ureter? Stones. So like me, I had a kidney stone. There was so much pain because it traveled where? It descended into the ureter. This happened three years ago. I do not drink water. I drink only what? Cocaine. You know what's cocaine? Not Pepsi Cola, but Coke with sugar cane. Oh my God, you're tempting me. That's Coke there. <laughs> I'm now salivating. That's cocaine, Coke with sugar cane, not Pepsi Cola vein. So a kidney stone that descended into the ureter. It was so painful. Why? Because my stone was as big as this. It went there. What's the most common type of kidney stones that you can think of? Calcium. Calcium oxalate. Okay. What is the stone that you find in patients with gout? Uric acid stones. Gout is defined as in hyper what? Uricemia. What is hyper? High uric uric acid, hyperuricemia, or uricemia means what? High levels of uric acid in the blood. Because of the excessive amount of uric acid in the blood, can that deposit in the joints? Yes. You end up with gouty arthritis. Can that excessive uric acid crystals deposit in your kidney? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's called gouty nephropathy. N-E-P-H-R-O-P-A-T-H-Y, nephropathy, okay? Now, what about if you have recurrent infection? Most of infections are due to what? Ascending cystitis, bladder infection, urethritis, can it travel to here? Especially mm -hmm. when there's regurgitation or blood flow, you end up with what we call pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis, an up, upper form of urinary tract infection. What happens if it keeps on recurrent infections? Can that also cause, now what happens? Okay, now remember this. Infection of the kidney, is it intrarenal or post-renal? Intrarenal. But the black stone, post-renal, right? Okay. What else can lead to this? What about a enlarged prostate gland here for men? Is that renal, intrarenal, pre-renal, or post-renal? Post, why? Because it came after the kidney. Any problem, therefore, or pathology in the ureter, bladder, and urethra is post-renal. On the other hand, what about giving nephrotoxic drugs like your aminoglycoside? Aminoglycoside, like your gentamicin, garamicin, Gamomycin. Have you heard of gamomycin? I'm just kidding. There's no such thing, but very often when drugs end with mycin, it could be what? Aminoglycoside. Is that nephrotoxic? Can that destroy the kidney directly? Yes. So is that intrarenal? Yes. What about if it's pre-renal? When there is what? A problem where? In the renal artery. Or the blood volume in the entire body, such as hypovolemic shock. When you have hypovolemic shock due to what? Diarrhea, when you have dehydration, hypovolemic shock due to what? Gunshot wounds, stab wounds. What, that, what does it mean? The amount of blood flowing here would be less than what? What's the normal blood volume in the body? Five liters about. Five to six liters of blood. Let's say you have a stab wound, a gunshot wound, you, you're bleeding and you have lost two liters of blood, the amount would only be four liters, would that be enough to bring blood to the kidneys? Less. 
If there's not enough blood to the kidney, will that be able to affect the amount of oxygen going to the kidney? Yes. And the cells will die. You develop tubular necrosis. That's why you have oliguria. Now, what about a blood clot in the renal artery? Yes, what is that called? Renal artery thrombosis. Do you understand? Now, where do you think that clot can come from? Can that come from the cardioembolic clot? Remember cardioembolic stroke? Can that clot travel here too to the... Yes, it could, see? The bottom line is to understand if it's pre-renal, if it's inter-renal, or what? Post-renal. Do you understand? Okay. The goal, therefore, is, of course, the doctor will have to determine which one is the problem. Is it pre-renal, inter-renal? So if I say I scan and, like in my case, there was a stone that was discovered here. I remember it was a, I think it was a Friday morning. I was driving on the freeway on the 105. I live in Anaheim. I took the 91, I took the 605 and 105 West. There was a pain in my left flank. Now, when people complain of pain, one of the things you do as a nurse is to get sure where is the exact location. Describe the type of pain. Is it dull pain? Is it sharp pain? Is it localized pain? Is it radiating pain? You remember when the nursing student was being asked by the, clinic, uh, the, the in, in, um, clinical instructor there, you have to be very specific, my dear. You don't like, you want to be smart, but very, very smart and say, oh, the patient has left flank pain. Flank pain, you can also say what? Lumbar pain, okay. So in my case, being a medical doctor, I said, I diagnosed myself, left flank pain, bang, kidney, bang. So actually one week before that, I had hematuria. Can you have hematuria here? We have stones. Yeah. Yes. So I went to see. I went to urgent care, and I think they wanted to save on money. Instead of ordering a CT scan, they just ordered one. KUB. Do you know what's KUB? Does anybody know what is a plain KUB done? They were suspecting that I had stone in my kidney. Does anybody know what that is? Kidney. Who is an LVN here? Me. You are. What does KUB stand for? I think it's a kidney. Bladder. Very good. It's an x-ray of the kidney, kidney, the ureter, and the bladder. So if you take an x-ray here, most of these stones are radio-opaque. What do you mean by radio-opaque? It's white. When you take an x-ray. So you take an x-ray, they found out there was what? A small, white, opaque lesion here. So it was what? A kidney stone. But I ignored it. It was very small. And one week later, the pain was so severe, I was cursing everything. I said, oh shit, so I told myself, what did I do last night? One of the most common causes of back pain is what? Improper body mechanics, right? Especially when you lift heavy objects, right? Mm -hmm. When you lift a heavy object, you should always bend your what? Hips and knees. But in my case, I remember I lifted my wife the night before. <laughs> uh, you're thinking of something else. Why did I lift my wife? Because she fell asleep in the couch, so I transferred it to the bed. And I don't want to tell what happened next, okay? She raped me, okay? With consent, of course. So when I lifted my wife, okay, I'm just joking, of course. <laughs> you always bend your hips and knees. If you don't bend your hips and knees, can you have lumbar strain and low back pain? So I, I said, I, I did not lift any heavy object, so then I say, maybe it's probably the stone that started to what? descend. So I called my wife, I said, honey, I have so much pain, can you pick me up here in the Lakewood ramp on the 105 freeway, which is probably 30 minutes away from the house. And guess what my wife said? Oh no, just come home, take the side streets. <laughs> oh shit, I said, okay. <laughs> so being a good husband, I said, okay. So I drove through the side street, I did not take the freeway. I was driving like this, I had a school, believe me, there was so much pain, I was having scoliosis inside the car. And then I took uh, Imperial Highway, then Beach Boulevard, then Orange to my house. So when I was getting out of the car, and I was going like this, uh, and my wife was there in the front door, and she saw me and said, Oh my God, is it really that painful? Why do you think I called you? No. <laughs> and she felt pity on the husband. And she brought me to the Anahan Memorial Medical Center. A scan was done, and lo and behold, 
the stone actually went here to the urine tract is the reason why there was so much pain. Now, what do you think will happen if you have an obstruction due to a stone here? The urine, can it back, can it flow? No. If it's complete obstruction, the urine cannot flow, the urine will backflow, goes back to the kidney, you develop what? Enlarged kidney. What do you call that condition where is there is enlargement of the kidney as a result of total obstruction of the ureter? Is anybody now? Based on your extensive readings? Yes? Ms. Barranco, do you know? Ms. Baldito? Who are the people who are attending my collaborate tutorial sessions? I think it's Ms. Dilly. Were you there, Ms. Canal, yesterday? Who else was there yesterday in the collaborative session? I think I counted six people. Can you raise your hands? Okay, so what's your name? Uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, and what's your name? Hmm? <laughs> what's your name? Are you sure you were there? Uh, you're probably very quiet. Every time I ask a question, I, I told them to answer in the chat box. Were you answering? A little bit. A little bit. I don't see your name. <laughs> Ms. Dilly, Ms. Kana, and uh, I can see her. There was somebody else. Me. What's your name? Priscilla. Huh? Priscilla. Priscilla, okay. See, I remember Priscilla. So, so one, two, three. Four, five, six. The rest of you, I don't know where you were yesterday, but uh, it's, it's okay. It's we've been there for the past two weeks and yeah. you weren't there, so I guess you're... Well, you know what? I was in San Francisco. I tried to open it. I think they probably didn't have internet connection. Yeah. So I used my cell phone, iPhone. I was in the Hilton Hotel. You know, I had this one-week convention. There was, I said, okay, so it's just empty room. Okay. It was um, Friday morning. I know, I, I'm pretty sure I was there 11th of Friday, July. July 6th. Friday, we have it on Thursday. Yeah. Oh, you're, yeah, I was there Thursday. Uh, yes, oh, okay. Thursday, Thursday and Friday. I was, I opened it both Thursday and Friday. Maybe, I don't know what happened. Anyway, the bottom line is, um, I think last week, I think I forgot the Thursday session. <laughs> anyway, so now let's go back to this. So, what is the answer to my question there for? It's called what? Hydronephrosis. Hydro because what does hydro mean? Water, right? So, what is that? So apparently it is hydronephrosis, right? So the good thing is that, can that be reversed? Yes, all we need to do is what? Get rid of the stone. So I remember, I went to, to the ER, they did a scan and they gave me medication to relieve the pain. And there's nothing else you can do. They said, they come back tomorrow, see your urologist, the doctor who's in charge of kidney urinary tract problems. So the urologist saw me and he knew that I had a medical background. I used to practice medicine in the Philippines. I said, Dr. Gamo, there are two things I can recommend. Number one, we can either insert a uroscope and remove through your penile urethra and get the stone. And just like your facial expression, oh my God, oh my God, my virgin urethra. I remember Madonna and I'm like a virgin. So my. So as you get, the other option, Dr. Gamo, is normal delivery of your baby boy stone <laughs> by drinking a lot of what? Water. So instead of drinking Coke, Dr. Gamo drank a lot of water, 12 to 20 glasses of water every day. So after one week, it's called, in medicine, it's called an obstetric, it's called EDC, expected date of confinement. Nine months later, your baby was going to be delivered. I cannot for forget that fateful day, one week later, I was in my delivery room. This was my bathroom, the toilet bowl was there. I was in the standing sort of lithotomy position like this. Instead of having a vagina, I had a urethra. I think you have thrown it already. Vagina here, so my baby was already what, crowning. <laughs> push, push. Well, thank God. The urethra. The stoat came up thanking me, but he died while on the way on transit. So I cannot forget because it was so painful, I could feel the stone coming out. <laughs> to cry because my wife was not holding, she, she was at work, she wasn't able to hold my hands. Remember the Lamas method of childbirth, you know, there, there's somebody trying to push you, okay, push, push, push and hold your hand. You can do it, honey, you can do it. Me, nobody, I just had to tell myself, I can do it, I can do it. And 
Finally, the baby came out. I grabbed the baby. Up guard score. You know, up guard score is score for babies. Zero out of ten. The baby was dead. I tried to resuscitate my baby stone with two fingers. My two fingers were even bigger than the stone. <laughs> At 10 a.m. on that fateful day, the baby stone was declared dead by Dr. Gamo, signing him a death certificate. I went to Kaiser, I told Kaiser, can you do an autopsy of my baby stone? And the results came back, it was calcium oxalate. <laughs> it brings back painful memories. I miss that baby stone of mine. I have three kids now, that would have been my fourth baby. Was it painful? What lesson did I learn from this? I should be drinking what? Water. So can dehydration lead to for, no, for formation of stones? Yes. Since then, three years ago, have I been drinking water? No. <laughs> <laughs> have I been drinking cocaine? Yes. <laughs> Does that contain water? Yes, that is my only justification. Is there water in coke? There is. So the doctor told me to drink a lot of water. I drink, maybe I can drink 20 of that. <laughs> I think if I invest my money in stocks of Coke, I will already be a rich man. <laughs> okay, so don't follow my steps. Do not drink Coke very often, okay? Okay, so, now have you heard of the word lithotripsy? Have you heard of that? Okay, what is it called? Lithotripsy, right? Okay. What's another name for kidney stone? It's called nephrolithiasis. Nephro what? Lithiasis. What does lithiasis mean? Stone. stone. Nephro means kidney. So, actually I asked the urologist, said, Doctor, can I have a lithotripsy done? I think there's a specific size for it to be done. Lithotripsy is the use of ultrasonic waves, ultrasound waves. And what does the ultrasound wave do to the stone? Breaks it down. Ultrasonic waves. So you're like in a CT scanner, you're inside the machine, the ultrasound waves will break the stone so that the stone becomes what? Sand. Sand. Mm -hmm. And it will come out in the urine. Okay? So it was not done. I think the doctor wanted me to suffer, which I did, allowing the and, and I was lucky the stone came out. Now, guess what? Last year, my wife, remember the wife who did not pick me up in the round? <laughs> remember that wife? Her name is Ethel. Ethel Gamo. So I received a call at 2 in the morning, an emergency call from my wife. And she was crying, you know. And she, she works at Cedar Signer from 8.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. the following day. She works in the microbiology lab here in Cedar Signer. And she goes, Dad, Dad, come over here to the emergency room. So yeah, apparently she walked from the second floor, of the, they have big, big buildings there, right? She walked from the second floor, she went down into the emergency room because she had severe, severe back pain. But I, I couldn't, because she was crying, I said, I thought she had pain here and went to the back. It was, it was pain radiating here, but the way she told me it was from here, it went down. So I thought she had appendicitis. I said, what? Right lower quadrant pain going this way. Apparently she was referring to pain that was like this, you know. Anyway, went there. Being a good husband again, you know. I should have not gone there, right? That's like what she did to me. <laughs> I was there within 45 minutes. I think my car was flying. I have a, I have a car that can fly, you know, <laughs> on the freeway. <laughs> but reaching the hospital, I asked for my wife, and there she was. She had an IV and everything, and she was still looked so pale and in, in pain. And guess what? What did she have? Kidneys, I'm so happy. <laughs> see, see what you did to me. <laughs> you told me to drive from, a like 30 minute drive from the gasoline station where I parked my car. And now she was suffering from the same problem I had, kidney stones. It was so funny. And she was given pain medications. And then because we were supposed to go to a uh, wedding in San Francisco, she still went with me. I said, are you sure, are you sure? Okay, so we drove, I was driving, and we went. And then the following day, she had to see the urologist, and instead of drinking water, the urologist had to insert what? A scope, and then remove what? And then they put a, uh, a stent, I think, to keep the ureter open. So now we are both 
uh, patients of kidney stones. So it's called nephrolithiasis. So be aware of that. Now, in the, uh, in the reproductive organs um, condition, there's so many of them, but some of them are congenital, right? In the case of a penis, what do you call the, if the urethral meatus is on the dorsal part, like this, the penis is here, and if the, like, they make wee wee, the urine will flow like this. Epispadia, dorsal, on top. What about if it's below or ventral? Hypospadia, so these are congenital. What about if the opening, now remember, if this is a penis, you have what? What do you call that skin that covers? It's called foreskin or what we call prepuce, right? In patients who undergo, or people who undergo circumcision, we, we excise the foreskin and then what? And then fold and then suture. Now, what happens if you have an uncircumcised patient and the foreskin will become narrow and strict, like this, stricture? What do you call that condition? Phimosis, P-H-I-M-O-S-I-S. What about for people who have persistent painful erection? Priapism, P-R-I-A-P-H-I-S-M, priapism, right? Now, the question now is, have you ever heard of, okay, so have you ever heard, have you ever heard of what we call a penile fracture? Yes. Penile fracture? Fracture. Yes? Have you heard of that? that? Yes, my dear, what's your name? What is a penile fracture? You said, you said yes. Oh, I heard about it. Oh, you heard about it. Well, why? What is a penile fracture? Your penis is fractured. It's broken? Kind of, yes. Well, you know why? Like when you break a bone, it's called the fracture of the bone, right? You break the radius, two, two fragments or three fragments. In the case of the penis, it is possible that you could actually, there is no bone in your penis. I think certain animals have bone, but uh, art does not have one. And um, when you look at the penis, it is very soft when it is what? Tumescent. But when it is erect, it is so what? <laughs> this, right? <laughs> Miss Nang is laughing. Why? What are you, what is laughing? What is, is it laughing matter? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> now, can anybody tell me what causes erection? Parasympathetic or sympathetic? Parasympathetic. What about ejaculation? Sympathetic. Sympathetic. So when a patient or a guy has an erection, it goes up. Okay? Because of parasympathetic response, there is blood flow. And you notice, for those of you who have not seen yet a penile erection, because I think some of you are 16 years old. Are you 16 years old? You look so young. <laughs> How old are you? 18? 20. See? So very young. So for those of you who have not seen a real one, so imagine this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Miss Canal is laughing there. You also look so young, my goodness. How young are you, Miss Canal? I'm 20. Oh, see, oh, see, see so imagine this to be an erect penis. Look. Look what happened. What happened to the blood vessels? Engorge. So that's exactly what it looks like. On here you have the, like a German helmet. <laughs> I'm trying to be very descriptive. You know it's a German helmet like this? It's called the glance penis. <laughs> so there's a lot of blood there, that's why it's erect like this. <laughs> okay, so when does, so parasympathetic erection, sympathetic ejaculation. So when a man reaches his point of no return, what is that? What is the point of no return, Miss Nang? I don't know. See, if you know what it is, my goodness. What about you, my dear? Is that because you're 19 years old? Or 20 years old? What is the point of no return? Huh? Yes? Huh? Okay, it's called climax first. You know, climax. So, I want it to be very dramatic. So, it's like, have you heard of a symphony? 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 Music? Climax, orgasm. Look. What goes up must come down. Spinning wheel. <laughs> That's an old song. Gloria Gaynor. So, parasympathetic is erection. What happens if your problems with erection is called ED? What is ED? Not head. Head is erectile dysfunction, right? 
And um, that's why you have problems with erection among men, right? Uh, erectile dysfunction. And um, now, what about women? Do women have erections? Yes, my dear, uh, my friend. What's your name? George. Huh? George. George. Do women have an erection, George? No. No. Are you sure about that, George? Okay, who is your neighbor to your right? What's your name, my dear? Ashley. Ashley, do women have erections? No. No, okay. What about the woman, in, what's your name? Jamie. Jamie, do women have erections? No. no. Okay, the, the gentleman over here, do women have erections? <laughs> no. no. Hannah, do women have erections? Uh, well, the clitoris gets engorged. Am I smiling, Hannah? <laughs> Look what happened to the penis. Engorged with blood. <laughs> I'm not touching. I'm not kissing the penis. <laughs> I'm trying to point to the blood vessels there. I, I did the same thing last Tuesday. They think I'm kissing the penis. No, I'm not. Right? I was just trying to po point to the blood vessels that are what? There, see, engorged with blood. So that is the penis filled with blood, right? Now, she's right. Women, when a woman is properly what? Aroused with stimulation. I hope you know what stimulation means, right? For women who are here, you probably have taken sex education. When a woman is properly stimulated, there will be increased vaginal secretions, they become wet, right? It's called increased what? Secretions of the vaginal secretions. So, you are exactly correct. There is engorgement of the blood vessels in the clitoris, and of course, that's the reason why once they have, they can also have an orgasm, right? And that is, how many orgasms does a man have? Oh, One. How about women? Multiple. Multiple. Life is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever realized that? Huh? That women have multiple orgasms and therefore, and excuse me ladies, you've been talking to each other all the time, okay? So when I'm talking here, I do not want any competition, okay? So I think every minute you talk, and after one minute you talk again, okay? So please, only one person will talk at any given, unless I call your attention, okay? So whenever a woman has multiple orgasms, do you know the reason why? It's about their anatomy, right? They have multiple what? Orgasms. Men, we have a very long what we call refractory period. What do you mean by refractory period? It takes a longer time for them to have another one. Erection. Erection and another orgasm, right? And it depends on, if you're young, it's probably within 30 minutes, you can already have one or 15 minutes, right? I remember one time I was talking to my nursing student in another school, and somebody said, I can do it in 10 minutes, Dr. Go, really? I said, really? Oh, that's just fine, you know? <laughs> Maybe because he's young, you know? So 10 or 15 minutes, another, but men, women, oh my God, multiple orgasms. I don't know if you watched this episode on Grace Anatomy. A woman having orgasm without even having sex. And not only that, multiple orgasms. Uh, did you watch that episode on Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. There was this, who said yes? Did you saw that? So the woman was in the emergency room and all this medical intern, you know, the, the, the young men and women there in, this young man, he was looking at the, the woman. So this woman was lying down in the gurney and her main complaint was she could not control her orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> she was lying in bed like this and then, and then after five minutes, and I can remember, the guy was trying to look what the heck is happening here. <laughs> and that's the reason why life is not really fair. Women can have as many orgasms as they want, but man, oh man, you have to wait for another couple of minutes, right? Especially if you're an old person, it will probably take you the whole day. <laughs> the next one. Coming soon to the next theater the following day, okay? <laughs> See, you're laughing already at old men. Once you start re re receiving those AARP, okay? Now, now in women, of course, the menstrual cycle is in a 28-day uh, cycle, right? Uh, what is the term used when you have so much pain? During dysmenorrhea, right? It's called dysmenorrhea. What about if there is um, heavy bleeding? Menorrhagia. What about if you're bleeding in between the cycle? Very good. What about if you have no bleeding at all? Amenorrhea. 
Especially when you reach what, the age of 55 or 60, when you have menopause. What does meno mean? Menstrual pause means stop, pause. To pause your menstrual flow. So many women are having that when you have what? Like 50, 55, or 60, right? Okay, you understand. Now, of course, uh, it's important to review the anatomy of women. What is that? It's the uterus, what is this? Fallopian tube. The ovaries are here, this is a thin brain. The cervix is here, like this, cervix, and then what? The vagina, right? Cervical cancer, what is the screening test for cervical cancer? Op smear. Now, what is the name of the virus that is associated with the cervical cancer? HPV or human papilloma virus, right? And in fact, uh, we have now a vaccine for this, right? For both boys and girls. Okay, let's have a short five minute break. And after five minutes, you can come back and you can actually what? Take the quiz, right? Okay.